So now we move on to the last topic of functions that is periodic functions. Let's say I have a function whose graph looks like this. So this is the graph of the function. If you look at this graph closely, you can see that this function repeats after certain interval. Let's say I have this interval as a. You can see that this function is repeating after the interval a. You see this portion is the same as this portion, the same as this portion, it's the same as this portion. You can say that the value of y at this point is the same as the value of y at this point at this point, at this point. Similarly, the value of y at this point is same as the value of y at this point or at this point. And what is the gap at this point? What is the distance gap? The gap is a. Similarly, this gap is also a. So this is what a periodic function is. The function which repeats after some fixed interval is said to be a periodic function. And the period of that function is nothing but this interval a. Now, I could have said that this the period of this function is 2a because you can see that the period uh, function repeats after the interval of 2a also. But to find the period of the function, we should take the minimum value of a. So the minimum value in this case is a. So a is the period of the function. Graphically, we have seen that what periodic function is. Now mathematically, if we want to represent, let's say I have this at as x. This as what is this? This is x plus a. Right? And what is this? This is x plus 2a, this point. So you can see if you want to write mathematically, f of x plus a should be equal to f of x. This is how a periodic function is defined. This is what property the periodic function should follow. Now, this, as I said, a should have the minimum value. And it has to be obviously be a positive number right and this a we also write it by t and this t is called the period of the function or this a is called the period of the function okay now to understand this more properly let's take an example Let's take the example of sine of x. You know that sine of x is a periodic function, but now let's prove that sine of x is a periodic function. And let's find period of sine of x. This can be done mathematically as well as graphically. Let's first do this graphically. You know that the graph of sine of x function is something like this. This is 0, this is pi, this is 2 pi, this is 3 pi, this is 4 pi, right? So I need to find the minimum value of t after which the function is repeating. So if I look at this graph properly, I can see that after an interval of 2 pi, this is the interval, the function is repeating. You can see that this value is the same as this value, is the same as this value. So the minimum interval after which the function is repeating is 2 pi. If I take this point, I add 2 pi to that, I get the same value. Again, if I take this point, I add 2 pi to that, I get the same value. So it is 2 pi after which the function is repeating. So the period of the function is 2 pi. Okay. So this is how I get the period of the function graphically. Now let's find the period of this function mathematically. To find the period, we know that sine of x plus t should be equal to sine of x. Now using properties of trigonometry, we know that sine of x plus 2n pi is equal to sine of x, where n can have values as 1, 2, 3, it can have all natural numbers. So the period can be 2 pi, can be 4 pi, can be 6 pi like this. But you know that as I had said, to find the period of the function, you need to take the minimum value. So what is the minimum value in this case? The minimum value in this case is 2 pi. 
So 2 pi becomes the period of sine x function. Right? Now let's take another example. And let's find the period of this function. Let's say I have a function f of x equals to x minus box of x. The question is prove first of all that this is a periodic function and then find the period of this function. So the last question first I solved graphically and then mathematically. So for a change let's solve this question mathematically first and then we'll move on to the graphical solution. You know that to prove that a function is periodic we have to prove that f of x plus t is equal to f of x and we need to find the value of t such that its minimum value and it's a positive quantity. These are the two restrictions we have. Okay. Now what is f of x plus t? Is x plus t you put instead of x you put x plus t so you get like this and f what is x? f of x it's x minus box of x. By the way what is this function? What is this function? If you had studied the last lectures, you know that this is the fractional part function or it represented by fractional part of x. Okay. Anyways, so this x, this x gets cancelled and we get box of x plus t minus box of x equals to t. Right? Now you know that if t is an integer, if t is an integer, I need to, I can take out this t, right? So, if it's 1, if it's 2, it's 3, it's 4, it's an, we can take out this value. So, if this is an integer, we can write like this. So, t becomes equal to t. And now, what is the minimum value of that t? The minimum value of the t is 1. So, 1 is the period of this function. And we can say that the function is periodic with a period of 1. So that is how we prove this mathematically. Now let's move on to the graphical solution. As I had said, this is the fractional part function. Right? Now since this is the fractional part function, I know what the graph of a fractional part function is. This is how the graph of fractional part functions look. So now, what's the answer? What is the period of this function? To find the period, you need to find the minimum value of t for which the function is repeating. As you can see that the minimum interval after which the function repeats is this interval. And what is this interval? This interval is of length 1. So from the graph, you can directly come to the solution that the period of the function is 1. Right? So this is how we find the period of any function. Okay. 